This generation especially are, are like, like an emotional marshmallow. Hypersensitive to the mean negative words and actions of others because your entire life you've been taught a half truth. The half truth is really a lie if it's not wholly taught. And the half truth that you've been taught since you were in kindergarten are this, words hurt, words wound, words kill. And if you go throughout life believing that, you are gonna be emotionally fragile, volatile, overly sensitive. If you believe words hurt when someone's mean to you with their words, you're like, you're hurting me. If you believe words wound when someone's mean to you with their words, you might be scarred for life. And if you believe words kill, you may be like the growing sad number of students who contemplate hurting themselves or hurting others in retaliation. But throughout history, especially in this great country of the United States of America, throughout history, Generations of moms and dads and educators and even grandparents have been trying to teach their students words don't have to hurt. Words only have the power that you give them. Man, if someone hates you, oh well, ain't no thing. It's all good. You see, when you believe that you have a human right, that everyone must be nice to you, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're creating in yourself a victimization mentality because when people are mean to you, you say, you have no right. No, they do have a right. It may be immorally wrong, but it is their constitutional right. In fact, the right we have in this nation is the right to free speech. Even if it's mean, even if it's hateful, we live in a nation, its cornerstone foundation of philosophy is that every single citizen has the right to stand up on their platform and speak their mind even if it offends another group. And that's critically important because if our government started to crack down on people's speech, they would take over and they wouldn't allow us to freely speak our mind. You see, we think the answer to end hate speech is to crack down on speech and demand less speech, but the reality is it's no. Let more speech happen and may that speech be empowered by the virtue of love so that it can drown out the vice of hate. But you gotta make a decision. You gotta make a decision. I'm gonna not give people power to hurt my feelings. I'm not gonna give people power to hurt my feelings. I'm gonna expect people, they're probably gonna be mean. And I'm gonna let them be mean, because it's a free country, and I can't stop them from being mean. But if they're mean, no matter how they treat me, I will always treat them the way I wanna be treated. And I wanna be treated like a friend. But if they're treating me like an enemy, I still wanna be treated like a friend. So I'm gonna treat them the way I want to be treated, the golden rule, which means I'm gonna treat them like a friend, even if they're mean to me. And that's what the golden rule means. Treat everyone like friends, especially your enemy. Treat everyone like friends, especially your enemy. Why? Because when you treat your enemy like a friend, you don't have to be friends with them, but you can be friendly to them. And when you treat your enemy like a friend, they have a hard time staying your enemy. Dr. Martin Luther King put it this way. You cannot drive out hate with more hate. Only love can do that because love is greater than hate. God bless you. I love you.